Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has to be the greatest comic book movie I have ever seen in my entire life. As a sequel to one of the greatest comic book movies in general and in Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse managed to blow everyone's expectations out of the water. There are very few comic book movies that know how to take relatively unknown characters and bring them into the mainstream fan base. A lot of the comic book movies did this. If you ask any person in America before 2014 to name every single member in the Guardians of the Galaxy, I guarantee you only 10 people will be able to get it all right. It was crazy. These movies really helped popularize every single character that they touch. This man just gagged me on my own video, bro. Now, I'll admit when I'm wrong, but I can safely say that Across the Spider-Verse is definitely the best example of this happening. Now, look, me and my boy Zev, we decided to take five characters from the first and second movie who we think are completely revitalized in the comic book medium now. First up on the chopping block, you already know I gotta start with my boy Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-Man 2099. Now, our boy Miggy is a very interesting character because Spider-Man 2099 really only had one good comic book run from the 90s. When he was first introduced, Spider-Man 2099 was a very popular character, but as the years went on and on, he kind of fell into this obscurity. He really only came back into the limelight with the game's Edge of Time and Shattered Dimensions, which were released well over a decade at this point. Across the Spider-Verse managed to take this one obscure obscure Spider-Man character who has one of the most fire Spider-Man designs of all time and they completely one up themselves with an even more fire design. When he was first revealed for Across the Spider-Verse, all the ladies on the internet were going absolutely crazy over my boy Miggy. And it's like, he himself knows that his new design is tough as hell, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I'm telling you, he spends 90% of this movie just standing there. Like he getting ready for an IG pick or something. Like, we get it, bro. You tough. Something about that neon lighting scheme in the Spider-Verse art style is just... It's just so perfect. It really boosted my boy's entire flow, bro. The Spider-Verse movies are the literal perfect example of taking a comic book character and completely rejuvenating their design. I wouldn't even lie, the directors of this movie must have chose the greatest character designers on planet Earth and trapped them in a room and gave them free reign to do whatever they wanted with these Spider-Man characters. And they absolutely cooked with my boy Miguel. They somehow managed to faithfully capture Miguel's character and translated it into the big screen. This is quite literally the best Miguel has been since the early 1990s. Across the Spider-Verse managed to perfectly convey how much different Miguel is from other Spider-Man that we've seen in the past. It's almost an exact replica of how he was in the first 2099 comic book run. Just based off his appearance in this movie, you can tell Miguel rolls completely different from every other Spider-Man that you know. He takes things way more serious than any other Spider-Man that I've seen or read in the comics. But don't let this serious act fool you. There are so many moments in the movie where you just cannot take this man Miguel O'Hara seriously at all. And like I said earlier, it is almost an exact mirror of how he was in the comics. This man wanted to be so serious so badly when he first became Spider-Man, but he just could not pull it off. And I am so glad that the Across the Spider-Verse team managed to translate that perfectly into the movie. I'll be honest with y'all, I could talk about Miguel all day, but I have to baton pass to my boy Zev so he can hit y'all with the next character in the video. I appreciate the baton pass, my boy. See, now me, I'm going to talk about the spot. I don't think I'm going to take that long talking about him, but this man had the literal hardest glow up of all time. Now, the spot is one of them random villains that they be making in them really, really old comics just so a superhero could beat them up. I don't know what they were smoking in the booth, but they really had Daredevil out here fighting Leapfrog. Who cooked this? And don't even get me started on Batman, bro. He's out here fighting people called the Kite Man. Like, man, no wonder comics was about to fall off, bro. You cooking stuff like this? 
But anyways, man, the spot was one of them villains where, yeah, he gonna take over a whole issue, but by the end of the issue, Spider-Man gonna pack him in a spliff. In the comics, he was an underrated E-list villain. He shows up in the Spider-Man animated series as well, had his own episode and everything, but I'm not gonna lie, he gets packed because he trashed. And his power was always really cool, but every single time he was introduced, it was just a catalyst for someone better to use his power. Like the spot in the animated TV series gets absolutely dropped, but Green Goblin's out here like, I'm not gonna lie, your power kind of nice. Give me that. And then damn near the whole rest of the series is out here using Spot's power, and he's not even a part of the series no more. The disrespect is insane. I know how Minato felt when he made the Rasengan, and every single person in the entire village is out here ripping his move off. But the Spot was actually fire in this movie. I really thought he was gonna be one of them Spider-Man villains that shows up in the beginning of the movie, and then he gets dropped. But nah, but he got the biggest glow up of all time. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to give you a standing ovation, buddy. I ain't know you could cook like this i'm not gonna say anything that he does in the movie but just know when the third spider verse come we might have to put him in the goat discussion that's all i'm gonna say i'm gonna pass it back to my boy i'm back now you know i have to talk about the prowler now i'm gonna say this in the nicest way possible but ain't no way any of y'all knew who the prowler was before the spider verse movies came out and if you sit here and tell me you knew who the prowler was not the aaron davis version but the original version of the prowler you get a gold star and a congratulations for being one of the biggest comic book nerds I have ever seen in my entire life. Now before y'all start baking me in the comment section, I'm going to tell y'all exactly why the Prowler is so good in Into the Spider-Verse. Now if we being for real, the way Into the Spider-Verse handled the Prowler's character has to be the absolute best comic book adaptation I have ever seen in my entire life. This man had just a good of a glow up as the spot did in Across the Spider-Verse. They took a relatively unknown character and completely changed almost everything we knew about him from the Ultimate version. And yes, the Ultimate version of Aaron Davis is trash. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. I don't want to hear nothing. Everybody here can agree on one thing and that is Into the Spider-Verse Prowler is so much better than his comic book variation. The way they treated the Prowler's character by making his relationship with Miles much more personal with the viewers is something truly special. They built up their relationship from the first minutes of Into the Spider-Verse and it ultimately cultivated into Miles having his own Uncle Ben moment. It was similar but also different enough from Peter's own Uncle Ben moment to where it made Miles and the Prowler so much more special as characters. And if I'm being 100% honest, I think that their relationship with each other is probably my favorite part of Into the Spider-Verse. The way these movies treat their characters is something really special because now almost every single casual fan of Spider-Man knows exactly who the Prowler is. The Prowler is so interconnected with Miles' own origin story that every time you think of Miles, you can't help but think about the Prowler too. And the Prowler is just yet another example of how these movies completely revitalize relatively unknown characters and bring them into their own spotlight. Now before y'all get tired of hearing my beautiful voice, I'm gonna send it right back to my boy Zef so he can tell y'all about the next character. Alright, I'm back in. We gonna talk about my boy Miles. This one gonna be kinda quick, I'm not gonna lie. Because before Spider-Verse, I'm not gonna lie, Miles ain't have a lick of character, bro. He was just Peter Parker. But black. And I know them comic book executives were just laughing. It's like, yeah, we got a black Spider-Man. You like that, right? Uh, no. He's one of those characters that is defined by the fact that he is a minority and that is basically it. I'm not going to blame it just on Spider-Man because so many pieces of media does this and I hate it here too. And this man, Miles, is black and Puerto Rican. They got a double combo, <laughs> bro. I know them execs back in Marvel's office was laughing to the bank. And it's like, yeah, Miles was cool, but everything that he was in, they would just say how similar he was to Peter Parker because he wasn't his own character. But in Spider-Verse, he's actually his own fleshed out creative person. He's nerdy, but not in a Peter Parker way. And if you know me, you know how I'm beefing with that dork Peter Parker, bruh. That man be insufferable sometimes. He's dorky and corny, but not in an awkward way like Peter Parker. He got a lot of charisma when he's on screen and he's very relatable as well. Very energetic lead. And every time I see him on screen, I'm like, damn, they really represented the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. I'm not gonna lie. Sorry, I had to get that joke in there, bro. 
who let IGN cook. But Miles is a great protagonist. His character arc in the first movie alone did more characterization for his character than his entire run in the comics. And Miles was a character for like, what, seven years before that movie came out? This goes to show the love that the Spider-Verse team had, man. I'm not gonna lie. It's facts! It's facts! It's not facts. These sizes are not facts. Facts. For the last character, me and my boy Seth are going to tackle this one together, and you already know we gotta talk about the wonderful Gwen Stacy, aka Spider Woman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we need to ask you one little question. Just one question. When you think of Gwen Stacy, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Now, I'm sure you had at least two answers in your head to that question. One of them being the amazing, spectacular, wonderful Spider-Woman, and the other one being her dying to the Green Goblin. Bruh. Now, which one of those answers is more relevant in the year 2023? And you better not say her dying to the Green Goblin. The Spider-Verse movies managed to take a character that has not been relevant for at least 50 years and completely changed everything about her. They literally built the foundation for Spider-Woman from the ground up. Everything from her personality, her character design, they completely changed everything. They made her so much better than her original Gwen Stacy comic book counterpart. And not only that, she bounces off of Miles extremely well in both movies. And especially in the second movie, she becomes her own fleshed out character that I think is done way better than anything the comics have showed us with Gwen Stacy's character. There is something extremely special about how Spider-Verse treated Gwen Stacy's character. And like my boy Zev said, she really comes into her own character and it's something that is extremely fun and satisfying to watch in the movie theaters. I absolutely cannot wait to see what they cook up with Gwen Stacy and Beyond the Spider-Verse. But look, with all of that being said, it's time to bring this video to a close. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please show us some love. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Zef's channel will be in the description and part one will also be in the description. So please guys, check it out. We worked extremely hard on both of our videos. Show us some love. And as always, thank you guys for watching.